I was born a bastard shortly after my daddy was drafted, and it must have been a rough draft, spilling the blood of fellow man in foreign lands, fighting side by side with brothers who will never again hold family in hand. And they must have been some of the greatest soldiers that ever lived. Because the politicians we elected erected a great stone tablet made of granite and forever etched their names in it. 58,177 of them spilled their blood in foreign lands, thousands of miles from home. And I grew up never knowing if my father was a poet or just some poem. Because nobody ever helped me get to know him. So I had to imagine what it was like to be him in the only way I know how. So, um... Imagine being a poet forced to write a poem you don't even believe in. Drafted spit lines to spill ink for inconceivable reasons. Then come home from foreign stages only had the poetry you thought you were defending spit on your pages. And the worst part is, most of these poets wasn't spitting lines to take lives, they were spitting lines to save lives. Save the lives of fellow poets that they slam side by side. Imagine an 18 year old poet who can't even finish writing his own poem because his ink is running dry. Looking in your eyes, scream for his mommy as you beg God why. Cause you realize he ain't gonna survive the next three minutes and 10 seconds. So imagine living minute to minute terrified that the next line might be written for you. And trusting the aim of your fellow poet's pen is the only thing that will get you through. Then imagine carrying the ink soaked pages of a poem that just took a verse in the head for you. And all all you can do is keep fighting. All you can do is keep writing. Spitting lines to save lives. Spitting lines to hold the line. All the while praying God won't let your ink run dry. Praying you can finish writing your old poem for your ink runs dry. And I, I'm that poem at home he didn't even know he wrote. See, I grew up never knowing if my father was a poet or just some poem. So I imagine he must have been among some of those poets who managed to escape the reality of the brutality of poets killing poets. I can see him passing around the open mic and smoke it like every breath made life. <laughs> All right. And I suppose some had a deeper pain that gave them the need to mainline metaphors straight to vein. Three decades later, how many still carry the pain? See, the greatest of our poets are immortalized in stone, but what of those who survived and don't even have a home? I once saw a poet on the corner opposite some kid selling rocks, and I know he was a poet because he had a haiku written on the side of a cardboard box. It read, help, Vietnam veteran, homeless, will work for food, thanks, and God bless. He was filthy, disheveled, a mess, but a poet nonetheless. And all he has to show for his mental, physical, and emotional scars is a bowl of lucky charms filled with purple hearts and bronze stars. And most of you, most of us, pass by him and don't even bother, but that poet, that man could have been your father. As for my father, he is a poet and the poem. And I thank God he survived so I could get to know him.